at this moment in Hong Kong is a tragedy, a crime, an affront to the civilized world. In a year in which so much has happened, we may look back in the near future and view this moment in Hong Kong as the single biggest moment of the year. The Senator sus suspend. The Senate will be in order. Members could take their conversations off the floor. The Senator for Arkansas. Mr. President, what's happening in Hong Kong right now is a tragedy, it's a crime, it's an affront to the civilized world. In an eventful year with so much happening every single day, we may look back in the near future and say this moment in Hong Kong was the most important event of the year. It's not getting enough attention, though, because the Chinese Communist Party is using the pandemic as cover for its crimes against Hong Kong. Under the cover of night, the Communist Party puppets in Hong Kong have enacted a security law that threatens to sweep aside the traditions and freedoms that have made that city such a special place. While the Chinese Communist Party hasn't yet rolled in the tanks as it did in Tiananmen Square, the effects of this law are no less chilling to democracy. The security law imposes broad prohibitions on what it calls subversive activities. What kind of activities? Activities like waving flags or chanting a slogan like Hong Kong independence or Hong Kongers build a nation. In other words, the security law criminalizes basic elements of peaceful protest and democratic change that Hong Kongers have used for years and that set them apart from their fellow citizens on the mainland. The new law also erodes the rights of the accused that are essential to a fair legal system. The Chinese Communist Party, though, isn't interested in rights or fairness. It's interested in control, total control. And this law exerts total control over the people of Hong Kong. Under the new law, protesters accused of such vague crimes as separatism and collusion could be smuggled away to mainland China to be tried in communist courts. These so-called crimes don't even have to be committed in Hong Kong in order to be punished. The new law could encompass expatriates with foreign citizenship living overseas, even here in America. So simply meeting with a United States senator like me or Senator McConnell or Senator Schumer or Senator Van Hollen could land a Hong Konger in prison for a lifetime. The Chinese Communist Party thus extends its iron rule beyond its own shores to our free soil. Those convicted under the new law could face life imprisonment alongside the many underground church leaders, Uyghurs, Tibetans, Falun Gong members, and other persecuted individuals the Chinese Communist Party has already disappeared. Indeed, the crackdown is already underway. The Chinese Communist Party's agents in Hong Kong rounded up as many as 300 protesters this week for what it called unlawful assembly. Some of the protesters were arrested under the supposed authority of the new security law. Their fate at this moment is unknown. The takeover of Hong Kong may seem like an event far away, especially when we have so many problems here at home. But the same could have been said after the Second World War, when Stalin and the Soviet secret police dropped an iron curtain over Eastern Europe. Czechoslovakia and Poland were far away too, but the brutal repression of their people showed the world what was at stake in the titanic struggle between freedom and communism. We face the same sort of titanic struggle today, and it's not limited to Hong Kong. All across its periphery, the Chinese Communist Party is acting aggressively. It's essentially invaded India and killed 20 Indian soldiers. In the South China Sea, it has attacked or otherwise threatened vessels from Vietnam, Malaysia, and the Philippines, has repeatedly and increasingly encroached on Taiwanese and Japanese airspace. But in Hong Kong, the security law proves most clearly that the Chinese Communist Party will not abide by its commitments 
whether to its own people or to foreign nations. Through its actions this week, Beijing has effectively torn up the joint declaration it made with Britain to govern the peaceful handover of Hong Kong, just as cynically as China has broken its commitments to the United States, to the World Trade Organization, the World Health Organization, and others. And of course, this law exposes once again the hideous nature of communism, which is so paranoid and insecure, it can't tolerate even a tiny outpost of freedom within its borders. But no wonder, freedom is an attractive, precious, and contagious thing. The way of life enjoyed by the citizens of Hong Kong could give the wrong ideas to the one billion Chinese yearning for freedom elsewhere in the country. And nothing could be more threatening to the Chinese Communist Party's rule. So now, the party has begun the takeover that Hong Kongers have long feared. Those of us with freedom to speak and act on their behalf must do so now, as one of the great citadels of Asia slips into the totalitarian darkness. While dark days may lay ahead for Hong Kong, one day the future will return, the sunny highlands of freedom